Hello and welcome to the Slip Slip Sis YouTube channel. I'm Che. I'm Gabs. And this is episode 49 of the Slip Slip Sis podcast. I'm coming to you from Southern California, though not for very long. And not that I'm moving, but I just have to be home for a month. Uh, and Gabs is up in Northern California. It is Sunday, September 29th. I'm realizing it's my friend's birthday, so I should text her and turn it over to Gabs. All of our information hopefully will be down below, but let us know if it's not. And have I forgotten anything? I don't think so. Oh, um, we should mention we are affiliates for Kettle and Hearth Fibers. That's a new affiliate program uh, that we're a part of. And they just released their new fall collection, mm -hmm. which is these really like nice tonals. Um, and Chaley and I are working on a design with one of their colors. So I don't know how long their fall collection is open for, but um, check it out. It's got a really nice like muted palette. So see what they have there. We're also affiliates for Yarnable, which I don't know if Chaley's received her Yarnable or not for October. Showed it last week. She showed oh. it last. Oh, week. for October? No. No. So you unfortunately will have to wait until November to see the October Yarnable because Chaley is leaving for a long time. Um, but I think Yarnable will open again soon. So check it out. We really enjoy it. Oh, um, I thought was <laughs> Hmm? That was good. Mm. Uh, you want to go first? Let's see. I have a hat, socks, and a gnome. What do you have? I have two socks and a garment. Okay, let's do our socks. So I'll Sock do my sock. I'll do my sock, and then you can do your two socks, and then I'll do mine, and you can do your garment last, because that's the one that everyone's talking about. All right, so... I made, I'm not putting them on sock blockers because if you put them on sock blockers, you can't see the design. So I made the Turtly Awesome Socks by Jennifer of Alindria Knits. Um, and the yarn, <laughs> the yarn is from uh, Southern Skeins. It was one of their um, sock boxes, which is actually really cute. And I really enjoyed it. Um, it was a sock set. So that was nice because I like Yarnable, but you have to like, there's extra, you have to pay extra to get the sock set situation. Um, but this comes with it and you got a bunch of other things. We've shown it on the podcast before, but I did make both of them. Woo the pattern does not call for the contrast color. I popped it in because it was a sock set. Um, I really like how they fit, but I did not enjoy the process of making them at all um, and it's not the patterns problem honestly it's me I don't like um I don't I realize I don't like charts mm. and that's not my favorite like because I struggled with that with the Hanukkah sweater too mm. that I don't like having to memorize the chart but that's different every row mm. it's not I'm not a fan um so I finished them it was a test knit the pattern's been out for a while um yeah, but they're done. Chaley had to threaten me with burpees so I would finish the second sock because I was like, I can't. And I was whining for no reason. It took me like two nights. So I think it took me like four hours to finish the thing. But I was like, I don't want to. Well, I'm I to, tired of this. Because I had to print the chart, right? Like I had to print it and mark it off. Yeah, Gabs, and... that's how people do knitting. I don't want to do that. I really like Elendria and its patterns, but I don't actually enjoy the process of making them because uh, they're beautiful. And they're always like, um, sometimes they remind me of like paint by numbers. So they're like really detailed. Mm -hmm. And I'm just, because I made her melting, um, melting pop socks. And then I also dragged my feet on that too, because you had to memorize every row. So it's just me. Yeah, you have like a very, I think, niche like interest level like you don't like it when it's too simple but you need to be able to memorize it or you don't like it which is like this is this is when like you're the problem hello it's, yeah hey, it's a, I'm the problem it's me it's a very specific like it needs to be a four to eight row repeat and like yeah which is kind of how most of the patterns that I write are like they're slightly more complicated than just vanilla right but if it's too simple, don't like it. No, throw it away. 
don't want to do. Okay, well, speaking of vanilles, I have some vanilla socks. I was calling these my modern beauty socks because it is yarn held double. One of them is modern beauty from Gem State Yarns. And the other is an unknown, it doesn't have a name, but it was my friend Elizabeth. She was dying yarn. So it's, that's the like, it's actually a solid. It's this solid kind of like purple color, but the oh. modern beauty was like a, um, like, you know, when they do half the skein, so like half the skein was purple, the same purple and half the skein was the white. And so like, it was going to oh, flash a lot if I just did the one. So I thought it would be fun because it looks a little bit more marled. Um, these are going to be a donation pair, but the yarn, so like, this is the, the one that you can't see. It's in my super cute slip, slip, sis, cozy. Um, this is like what the solid looked like. And it's, she, I think she had, I don't think she sells her yarn, but I think she called it Highland yarn or Highland wool, um, made from Virginia. So nice pair of DK socks. Um, and then I have another pair of DK socks. These were completed and you've seen them before, but these are socks for Gabs' friend, Hana, which I will put in my suitcase after this so that I don't forget them. And also these, so Gabs can put them in the pile of donations. Um, so these were, are for um, Gabs' best friend and they are out of, did we decide, Arakania? I apologize if I, if I mispronounced And nobody it. corrected called, us in the comments, so I was like, dang it. And it's called Rosa Dorado. Oh, right. Rose Gold is what we thought yes. it was. Yes. So these are fun. DK. Held up. Fingering held double. That's all, folks. <laughs> <laughs> You've been busy. Okay. I also had another test knit. Um, and I tested the Tessa cat hat for blue daffodil crafts. Put on your head. I can't. I got a clip. It's. Um, Put on your head. Okay. Look at how badly this flashed. Like, it's ridiculous. It's like a 90s tiger or something. <laughs> like, I don't know what happened. Um, I initially intended, because I knew it was going to flash badly. I intended to. It's a DK weight hat and I intended to hold it double to like mitigate some of the flashing. Well, I couldn't get gauge mm. um, even a little bit. It mm. called for US threes and DK weight. And I knit this on ones with fingering weight and still barely got the gauge. Um, and then I knit the teen hat because I knew I, I'm not a hat person. I knew I wanted to donate it to knit the rainbow. Um, but then later the designer changed it that the teen hat is actually a child large. Oh. Like, ooh, it looks cute on my child. Like, if you check out our Instagram, it looks really cute on my kid. Um, so now I'm like, dang it, I think I'm going to donate it anyway because it's like, it fits my head. Like, it fits. It just looks cuter on a kid. Um, but I did discover a new cast on. Oh, yeah, it's my child. So um, I was not going to put the photo in. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I have a really cute cast on. It's called the Channel Island cast on. And I really like it for hats um, because it doesn't, um, you know, when you do a long tail cast on for hats, there's definitely like a right side and a wrong side. There's like a pearl side of it. This doesn't have that same issue of that. And it gives that um, kind of like tubular look to it without having to fiddle with a tubular cast on. So it was pretty easy and I liked it. And the pattern was pretty fairly um easy to follow once you figured out how to read it mm. um, it's only a four row repeat um the designer's writing style of patterns is not for me um that's you gotta stop it. testing stuff gabs yeah i'm at the place where i'm like no and like she was she's editing how it is so the final one may be different but i was like nobody and lots of people had good suggestions and she was great about taking suggestions so she's a great designer it's i'm learning in my old age of 33 that i'm particular about no. how patterns are written. yes so i'm like not you i'm not gonna do that um so it came out fine it's she's a really supportive designer so it's nothing against her it was just like 
this is written in a way that doesn't work for my brain. And it actually might not even be my brain. It's probably, it doesn't work for my visual disability because it would just have a lot of like text. It was like knit this, purl this, knit this, purl this, knit this, instead of like knit to marker. And I like, my eyes can't focus on the text. I probably should have printed the darn thing, but I don't like to print my patterns because it feels like a waste of paper. Feels like this is a little bit of you. Uh, yeah, this is definitely a Gabs thing. Well, you know, when we were in school, when mom, we'd have to like bring our ream of paper to all of our teachers or were you not in school when that happened? I don't know. Really? Maybe it was a thing in the early year that budget cuts. There were budget cuts in California and we had to provide reams of paper to our teachers. So I think I'm conditioned that like, don't use paper unless it is absolutely necessary because there is, there's a paper shortage. That's all. But look at my giant gnome I made. <laughs> wow. He's a big boy. That's the size of your head. I thought you said it was a sheep. Oh, you're right. It is a girl. So this was the someone to someone to write gnome about. Gnome knit along by Sarah Shira. This is so big. It's so big. I it was Everybody else's looks big too. My gauge is awry, but I thought about it and I was like, no, it should still be proportional to my other gnomes, right? Because if I've, I use US ones to knit every single gnome, right? So even if they're all bigger than the original, they all should be like proportional to each other. Um, this is from Capella Luna Fibers. Oh shoot, my hat is from Molly Klein Design. That's it. The yarn. Whoops, I'm good at podcasting. The the orange is my sister's um, leftovers of Desert Vista Dye Works. Um, Zombodies eating candy corn. Um, the purple is uh, Brine Dye Works. The nose is Parchment from Forbidden Fiber Company. This didn't have a name because this was a mini. This was two minis because I thought inside my mind mm -mm. that a pattern called for 50 grams of yarn. And I was like, I got this with a 20 gram mini. I did not have this. I actually ran out. Like I used all 40. Let's see if you can see it. Uh, it's not really working out for me. Um, can I show you? Look what happened to his head. It's his hair. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I figured it was his face, right? Like that was okay. Cause it was his face. Um, yeah. It's the biggest gnome I've ever made. Um, it's a full, like, this was 50 grams of yarn, and this was basically another 50. I think I used, like, 48. This is 100 gram, but that's what the pattern were called for, and a lot of people seem to run short on the body because I'm in the Ravelry group, but now my sister wants one, and this is, like, a freaking beast of a gnome. I couldn't even, like, I didn't even have enough weight to weigh him. Like, he's, I had to weigh him down, and I sewed a little pouch and like put rice in it to make a weight because usually I just use a rock, but I was like, I don't have a rock that's this big. Um, so I had to make like a gnome weight because I also wasn't going to buy pellets that were $20 for a singular gnome. But this is my gnome. He's Halloween and I really like his purple beard. I think it there's purple flex on here because, you know, my excellent camera is picking that up right now. That's all. But now my sister wants a pink note. And I don't even have the gold color she wants for the yellow. body. She wants, oh, she wants yellow for the body. But, I, oh, I have yellow. I remember that I just got yellow. Also except a nice teal. Well, I don't have the teal. And she probably does. And then that means she'll give it to me. And then that will be into the stash and not out of the stash. <sighs> if you make it fast, it won't really count. This is a 50 gram body, Che. It's not fast, man. It's, hey, it's I don't even ask you to make me that many things from knitting. You could make yourself the gnome, too. I don't want to. That seems yeah. like too much. This pattern I had to print, too, because you have to, like, check the, bo the, the box. Because it's like, in this row, repeats. You have increases. But this row, you have the repeats of the other. Mm. But... I don't know. I'm less stressed about gnomes and chickens because if they don't turn out to be the right size, it's not trying to fit something else, right? right. Like it's a standalone thing. 
So if it's giant, it's giant. Because it's never going to be too small. Like, that's not a thing that happens with gavs. Is that all we have for finished objects? Oh, no, your epic, your epic sweater. Go, go, go. Tell Excuse me. Talking about fit. I finished my plug those little ears, stitch those bitches together cardigan. I don't think it will fit in the camera. It will not. Let's see. Let's see what we got. At least my floor is somewhat clean. <laughs> Ta-da! That's great, Che. Yeah, buddy. I theoretically will have a video on how I did this, but those videos have been sitting in my phone for a very long time, known as a week. So we'll see if I get to it, but I finished this 122 squares. I just single crocheted them together, did a little half double crochet around all the edges and she's done. And I think she fits pretty well. I did, I didn't like block block it, but I wet it and laid it down so that just like the edges wouldn't curl. Um, so, so she definitely flattened out and the sleeves grew for sure. Cause when I had first finished it, they were like up there. Um, but I, I, it's interesting cause it's the same length, but it somehow created like a bell sleeve. I don't think it actually created a bell sleeve. I just think it gives the illusion of a bell. Right. Right. Your hands are littler than your shoulders. Right. I would hope so. Uh, but yeah, I learned some things like there's some floopy bits here where like I didn't connect it. Ah, uh, yes. I just went around it, but like I did it here. Right. So I was like, oh, I wasn't going back though. Um, so it's done. Ta-da! And um, there is no pattern. Uh, we did gap, and by we, I mean gaps, did some math. And then I laid down on top of my squares, realized it wasn't big enough. So then we added more squares to it. And that was pretty much how it got made. And so like, it was literally me lying on the floor of her house to be like, this feels long enough. And knowing that it was crochet, so it's kind of heavy. So it was going to grow anyways. Um, it is very popular on the Instagram right now. So I'm like, ah, shoot, I might actually have to write up the recipe. Um, I'll write what I wrote. All of Chaley and I share a Ravelry, so I can write it on her project page for it. I'll just write what I did and wrote for her. Um, it's not going to be any kind of like regular polish pattern. It's literally just going to be the instructions, probably minus the swear words. <laughs> and um, yeah. If you need help sorting it out and you really want to make one, I can help you out and we'll sort out your measurements, which is what I did to my sister. I was like, what is this measure? What's this? Okay. Let's look at it. I will say all of my squares were also different sizes. So like I kind of fudged it, which is probably why like the wedding the thing was helpful because like, like these two that are next to each other, this one is very thick and plush fingering and this one was not. So like trying to get them to fit together, I just fudged it. Um, these all are, oh, sorry, these all are, these are all fingering weight granny squares. I used um, Nitty Natty's granny square pattern um, and I did six rounds for each square and I try to stay mostly within the pink and purple family but as my sister so helpfully said to me after I sent her all of the squares that I've been laboring on for a year and a half you guys funny thank you Gabrielle I got a little desperate <laughs> show up the funny blue guy I don't know maybe they won't be able to find the funny blue oh guy. my god Kaylee everyone could find the funny blue guy <laughs> <laughs> it got pink it's fine <laughs> but like there were I was running out and I didn't want to do like a whole full skein like so because I'd already even done that like I prepped some yarn to take me to Texas in four weeks just so I could have that skein balled up so I think I'm going to store this folded up, though. I feel yeah, like I, I think it. if you hang it, it's going to. I have to figure out where I'm going to store it, though. But, yeah, 
This is my longest, was my longest standing whip. I started, it was supposed to be a blanket. I started in April, 2023 and it is now SEP 2024, but she's done. Yes. That's it. I like it. We're in our crochet era. For sure. Yeah. Cause that's what I'm doing right now. I'm crocheting. All right. What do you have for whips? I have one sock. All right, show your one sock, buddy. Oh, I actually only have two because I forgot one of them I can't show. This is in my bag from Slip Slip Sis. Cupcakes. Halloween cupcakes. Which that I actually still have in the shop. Or miss out. <laughs> yeah. Oh, but it's also got the yarn in my cozy... From Slip Slip Sis. Ayo, look at that. Which I also think I still have in the shop. So I am making some socks and I'm not very far at all. Uh, but these are kind of like Halloween themed. I've dropped a stitch. That's awesome. Uh, and so these are Rebel Yarn Co. Witching. No. Which is no. Hold on. Good. Which I've lost. <laughs> which which is honor. Which is honor. I got it. Like how fun. Ooh, I like them. And then we got the I have my candy corn thing, which I think we got from Gary. Yeah, we won during our last knit the rainbow blitz of things. So these are fingering weight socks, which I haven't made in a while. So here we are. That's it. That's it. Okay. I have, I am working on a muscle burrow hat and I had the epiphany that Chaley and I have been making the muscle burrows wrong the entire time. And I've made three. I know Chaley's way made way more than me. So she, we made what, like 10, mm -hmm. 10 total. And every single time we both independently have been making the exact same mistake. Um, so there's multiple rounds of increases and we've just been skipping the last round, which is actually supposed to be the repeats throughout the pattern. So I just discovered it, that we were doing it wrong, but it's fine. So this is my muscle. Look how crazy it is. Oh, this is my muscle bra. Um, and it's area 51. What are you looking at? What's up? I'm just looking. You mean how the stripes are all different? No, like it, it's going like this. I know, right? It's weird. It's actually, I think, I think it's the way I'm holding it. Cause like when oh. I put my hands in it, it's fine. Okay. I was like, why Gavs, did no, you I, just like, like what, increase? <laughs> no, when my hands are in it, like it's actually fine. Um, It's the way I'm holding it. Um, So I can show you all my stripes. The stripes are different because they're actually 10 gram minis of each stripe, I guess. Does that make sense? There's 10 gram minis and I keep just adding them in. Um, so the first one goes to about here and then the striping pattern changes. And then as I continue down, I've just started my third mini. They're from area 51 fibers. I won a like sock set, um, not a sock set. I just the mini skein set from Dana Ray makes last year. So 2023 summer for Christmas in July. Um, and then, uh, I'd have been sitting on them, but I started this. And then I didn't like the colors, so I ripped them out and put them and ditched them because they were technically, I guess, Christmas colors, but not really. It was like there was a gingerbread house one that was pink, white, and like gingerbread color. But and then oh. I had a pink, green, and white one, which I guess could be Christmas, kind of like a vintage pink Christmas, but that didn't look great, great with the... Is it this? Yep. <laughs> so it didn't look great and I didn't love it so I ripped it out and I've started again so my plan is I'm going to knit in the new if you bought the muscle bro pattern you for and you haven't updated it yet like you click the update button on Ravelry she's released a new one where it shows you how to color block so Whoa. I'm gonna do this and then I'm going to have like a white brim and then a red brim so I can flip and when you flip the muscle burrow. And then I'm going to keep going with the stripes because I thought two, I thought a stri all stripes 
was a lot and I needed to visually break it up. It's going to look a little um like Hoovian anyway. This is for your head? Yeah. Sweet. It's going to be I also think I need a pom-pom on top of it because like I have a very smallish head. So I need to like put bulk on it so it doesn't look so ridiculous. I've learned. I've learned I look decent in bulky weight hats because it adds bulk to my teeny tiny head. How are you going to do a pom-pom for a reversible hat? Um, I'm going to put one of the snaps on it so you can snap. Mm. I'm going to sew the snap to each end and then so you can snap off the muscle burn. We'll see how it looks. We'll see how it goes. Um, so that's what I'm working on. It's been going great, actually, now that I figured out. I know now that I've decided to read the pattern, it's going well. Sweet. Is it still me? Yeah. Oh. I have made a lot of progress on my hexi square or mm. hexi gone, hexagon, the blanket. Um, I'm down here now with it. And oh my gosh, I struggled so much to figure out where to attach this. I don't know what was happening to my brain, but it just, it was just noping. It was just noping all the way around and it was horrible. Um, but I figured it out now. Um, and I think I've done it correctly. I had to rip it out two times. Um, so it is just all scraps. I'm doing fingering weight held double and the like main joining color is also Capella Luna. Um, and it's turning out really cool. I like it a lot, but I've also learned it goes better when I count. So lessons I have learned as a knitter of, oh, I don't know, almost 30 years is read the pattern and count yeah it's been going great it's going good uh <laughs> but I really like it uh this blanket is for my daughter Eleanor she's very excited and my other daughter of course wants one so I'll but I like making that it's a scrappy blanket so it's chill um and then I'm working on another project that it's the one I've been working on for six weeks and it's the design for a company. And oh my gosh, it's taking me so long. I also am playing yarn chicken, which I've never done on a design before. So I'm really stressed out that mm -hmm. I'm going to, I'm going to have to go back to the company and ask for more yarn, which I've never done either. I may just not and just buy the yarn if I need it. Yes. Usually I have like four, that's how, like, usually I have lots of skein, lots, like lots left, over, even if it's a sock, right? Like I've never used the full hundred grams. On okay. We have to scurry along because I have to get ready to go to work. All right. What else we got? Uh, I think we need to do the giveaway winners. And I do actually think we need to do our September totals. Okay. I'm on it. Um, Our I'm giveaway you. winner. Go, you go. Our giveaway winner for the white, this white yarn is our uh, Jimmy Bean's wool buddy, Amelia Dudley, which we're devastated we can't go this year to Jimmy Bean's wool. But we both have to work. But don't worry, we're doing something anyway. <laughs> we're doing something next week to cheer us, the week afterwards to cheer ourselves up. So, Amelia, email us. And we sat, we're sad we will not see you in May, June. All right. And then from my video on the stash we don't talk about, I had two bags um, to give away. So hopefully those who are watching that video also watch the podcast. Um, but there are a lot of people interested. So if I don't get somebody, then that's okay. Um, but the winner of the pink Molly Klein design Christmas bag is Marilyn Knits. Congratulations. Let us know. I will also, don't worry. I will bring these with me to the Bay Area so I can mail them from the Bay Area. You don't have to wait five weeks for your bag. And then the winner of this floral um, polar bear yarn bag is Lisa Luft4633. So Marilyn Knits, Lisa Luft4633. Send us an email with your mailing address and I will have them go into my sister's mailers that I'm going to use because I'm not also packing mailers. That feels silly. I have um, 300 peachy mailers. It's fine. I will also be using her printer. So woohoo. Uh, but yeah, let us know and congratulations. Um, also, um, starting in October, we're doing Vlogtober and I've also decided I need to clear my stat, my inventory of 
project bags because Chaley and I sell project bags on Etsy. Um, so each day I'm going to put a different project bag on sale. So check it, follow our Etsy store so you can check out what the sales are and all of those fun things. Did I show these already, Che? I did, right? No. Oh, shoot. Well, we have a surprise November pumpkin collection. This is the pumpkin spice. This is like my favorite print that we've had. It is, pump, um, it's all like pumpkin themed bags. Um, I bought a bunch of yardage, so don't you worry. Um, and it's got like pumpkin spice lattes and pumpkin cider and pumpkin pie and pumpkin like bars. And then this one is, it says pumpkin spice and everything nice. And it also has like pumpkin donuts and pumpkin slices and like this little thermos. So that is in the shop as well, which probably won't go on sale until November. Like it's available for you to purchase, but won't have a discount until probably after the pumpkin months. Cause that makes sense. So it'll mostly be the summer stuff that is on sale. Um, yeah. So follow along with our, on Instagram or on blogtober. Chaley and I are doing it weekly this year because it's too much to do it every day for us. Um, other things we had to say slash share, Chay. What's your September numbers? Ah, okay. Well, to be fair, it is September 29th. So yeah, I have one, one whole day to no, get okay. my act together. Right? Is that right? Am I right? I am at minus three. So I have one yarn in, used four yarns. And I made five objects this month. What are you at for your whole year? I don't know. Oh, you haven't, you just only do months. Okay. Yeah. Well, we do this differently, but I'm at 403 skeins this month. Last month, I was at 424 skeins. So I had one come in, which you've seen before, which was the kettle hearth. And then I have used 22 skeins of yarn this month. So we're cooking. I'm cooking on it. Um, the goal was 30 skeins, but I'm not feeling like I can get through eight skeins in two days. No. Mm. But we also count our skeins differently. Like I don't count minis. So like, like literally I got zero for my jacket. Yeah. Because I didn't use the whole um, joining color. Yeah, it's hard. But we are actively trying to stash down. At least I'm not good though. I started this, I start, I also said the school year. I started January 1st. I had 429 skeins and I'm only at 403 skeins. But I have a skeins use tracker. I've used 235 skeins of yarn this year. It's a lot. Yeah. And like you're like, oh, were, were all those minis? No, they weren't all minis. I have used um, about 8,500 grams of yarn this year. All righty. Pushing for 10,000. Let's see how yeah. it goes. Yeah. Maybe that might be my goal next year is to do it in grams, not in skates. Feels like a lot of measuring though. Well, I use up the whole majiki. Daniel does the measuring, not me. Okay. Well, I think that's all at this point. Yeah, um, no giveaways because we don't podcast for a while. We won't have another podcast probably till November because we are doing our weekly Vlogtobers. So stay tuned for that. Um, thank you so much for watching. If you're a winner, let us know. Otherwise, have a great rest of your day. Bye.